Previously on Two Up and Overloaded. On our way through the tropical country of Brunei, we hit a torrential rainstorm. It was hours and hours of riding through the rain, which then caused our phone that we use for navigation to die after getting water damage. like an iPhone 6. Oh my God, I'm already talking about it in past tense. This is really bad. And although we fixed it and the sun came out, we thought our water problems from the storm were far behind us. Unfortunately though, as we continued to ride across the Pan Borneo Highway, trying to complete our goal of riding a motorcycle from tip to tip of the island of Borneo in East Malaysia, we realized that doing so during the rainy season has its drawbacks. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa no tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll go. Through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun, fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to Join us along our epic ride. You see the wind through our hair. <laughs> How fast we go. Good morning everyone. Today is another kind of cloudy, a little bit rainy day. We're hoping it should clear up. Well, at least that's what the weather app says. A little bit, but as you can see, it's pretty gloomy. So we're gonna be riding all the way to Kota Kinabalu, which is called KK uh, by the locals. And it is the biggest city of Sabah. We're actually gonna be exiting the state of Sarawak for the first time and entering Sabah, a land of beautiful beaches and the largest mountain in Borneo, and that is Kinabalu. So it should be really, really pretty. We're quite excited. Fingers crossed the weather turns out okay today. And yeah, we're gonna get packed up with our new rack on the back of the bike. Thank you to Tim. All right, let's go. So we Packed up that morning, excited for what the new day was to bring. I was excited to test out my new rack that I made. Oh yeah! I was very, uh, it, it was either going to be awesome or, or a complete failure, but <laughs> I had enough zip ties to hold pretty much, you know, the moon in orbit for the rest <laughs> of all time. Bam! Look at that, wow! Starting on one side, going to the other side. You can see Tim's handiwork from this side. Oh, we got a new wooden thing. Yes. Big shout out to Temple Moto for allowing us to stay in such a beautiful accommodation. Because this hotel room is so awesome, we want to thank Temple of Moto for helping us out and supporting us in our journeys with a luxurious room just like this. So Temple of Moto is a motorcycle tour company that goes all across the United States to different national parks. The roads that it rides on are incredible. They also have tours in Mexico and Europe as well. And they are super awesome. We went with them in Yellowstone and just, it's an amazing tour company with very, very cool accommodations. So check them out at templeofmoto.com. Bye, thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye. Very, very nice hotel. Here we go. The weather was looking good. No rain so far, which was this good was because true. we had just fixed the phone from water damage. And so we had it off. This is true. This is our tripod going to long lengthwise. Our rain gears in the blue bag. And then our stinky, stinky shoes are in the black bag. <laughs> nice. And that's it, folks. <laughs> Except for the tank bag. It's amazing when you don't have camping gear how little you actually need. But camping gear, kind of need panniers if you're going to have all of that for two people. 
or at least at the comfort level that I want. <laughs> That day we went from, what was it, Sarawak into Sabah? Yeah. And it's kind of like, there, there are two Malaysian states. So it's kind of like Illinois and Indiana bordered together. But in at least East Malaysia, when you go from one state to the other, there's a border there. And yeah. we had to do our whole passport and, you know, get a new stamp. We got another 90 days. It was, it was odd, to say the least. It'd yes. be like traveling across the states, and every state you go to, you get like another 90 days. It was like an international border. In fact, people from Sabah who want to go into Sarawak, they have to do all the same customs procedures as they would going into Brunei, which is another country. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. And this was uh, an accumulation of borders over the last couple of days. <laughs> We went from East Malaysia to Brunei, Brunei to East Malaysia, East Malaysia. it was just but. Yeah, if you have a motorcycle in this part of the world, you can just keep getting 90 day yeah. visas over and over again the, very uh, easily. The extended passports, the thicker ones. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of stamps. Pro tip, pro tip. And you know what? In the United States, a lot of people that come from other countries say, wow, you guys fly your flag all over the place. I see it everywhere. Well, Malaysia does the same thing. They fly their flag everywhere. And not just the Malaysian flag, which looks very similar to the United States yeah. flag. It's not the stars and stripe, it's the star. And the, the star stripes. and stripe, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but also they, flag the, they fly the state flags all over the place too. So. Um, in Sarawak, we were very accustomed to seeing that orange and red mm -hmm. state flag. And now we were entering into Sabah, which had this beautiful blue flag with the shape of the mountain of Kinabalu on it. This is true. But it kind of looked like an island. Because it does. <laughs> to like, you know, a foreigner, you're like, I don't know what that is, but that's an island. Yeah. <laughs> I, when you say it's the same as America, I think there's even more Malaysian flags yeah, maybe. everywhere. <laughs> I, it's just, you know, it's like ticker tape, 4th of July, everywhere you go. But it's a great country to be proud of because it absolutely. is absolutely stunning and beautiful. And it has a cool flag. It does. So after our little border crossing, we wanted some, some food. You actually got off of the main highway, the Pan Borneo Highway, yeah. and decided, hey, let's go to the coast. Because we haven't really seen the coast, and there's like a little detour that you can take. But we took this little U off ramp, and we found somewhere that looked cool. There's yeah. a whole soccer team eating oh there. Oh my gosh, they were the coolest. Yes. Hey. <laughs> What team? Red Dogs! Ah, Red Dogs! Ah, America! Chicago! Okay, one, two, three! Go Red Jaws! Go Red Jaws! The town is called Sipatan and everything really was right on the ocean front, which was very cool. The food was good, yep. and it was the perfect little rest stop, but oh man, it was so hot. It was very, very hot. Not not the food, but the weather. <laughs> but uh, but we, we made at least a couple more subscribers there, so that was... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! 
Thank you, mister. Thank you. Really great people. And we got back on the road and we, you know, like, it just started to dawn on us, which it already has for so long, but like there's Indonesia and Malaysia. It's just yeah. filled with just the, the kindest people and just the most hospitable and friendly. There are friendly people all over this world, but like, wow, Malaysia and Indonesia just yeah. really were blowing our minds when it comes to friendliness. Yeah, right? We just met like a, a soccer team. Yeah, nice little... and you kind of veered off the main road to come to this little town. I'm so glad you did. Yeah, I saw that it was by the ocean. The ocean kind of brown to see, I'm not sure, but it's kind of... It is brown. Yeah, but it's, it's still nice. It didn't take long after we left the town of Sipitang to get to a part of the road where all these cars were kind of lining up. Yeah. We're like, oh, is it more construction? What could it be? No. And usually we go around cars, but it didn't take long for us to realize, uh-oh, <laughs> yeah. this is not road construction. I, I was zipping through the middle and then like I saw like this just river, <laughs> like just going through the road. Yeah. It was like, yeah, an entire river had just taken over the road. It was that brown, muddy, thick water from lots of flooding. From the rain before that we had experienced yep. the day before. Once you get that momentum, you go and you start plowing through that water and you don't stop because if you stop, yeah. You're just gonna get flooded and you know, it's crazy. And Southeast Asia is known for its small motorcycles. And there were some of those. And I kept looking out for them because I was like, all right, if a really small motorcycle can make it through, then we can make it through. Even though our motorcycle itself was quite small. Yeah. 250 for a Malaysian standard or an Indonesian standard is, is pretty big. But for us, that's a very small motorcycle. Yeah. And I'm wondering, all right, where are the air intakes? Like how high is the exhaust up off of the ground? Because the worst thing is there's this line of traffic. We're gonna get stuck behind a stopped car and then our motorcycle is just gonna fill up with water. Can't stop though, Jesus. Yeah. It was a rented KTM from Tay <laughs> Motors. Motors. So shout out to them and uh, welcome to this episode where we had no idea if we were going to flood the bike or not. But <laughs> you got it back just fine, spoiler alert. Yeah, a lot of people say, you know, ride it like you, you stole it or ride it like you rented it. And I don't want to no. trash this thing. And it's been good to us. We just blessed it and named it Koi, the real McCoy. Yeah, that's true. It was, uh, it was proven to be a very nice little motorcycle. Absolutely. And then here we are, you know, yellow submarine in it. <laughs> But we are plowing through this water like yeah. a speedboat. Mm -hmm. And you, again, you can't stop once you're going because it's just <laughs> all that water will just surround you. Absolutely. And the oncoming traffic was just splashing us like awful. we were at SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. We were definitely at an amusement park for, for motorcycles yes. and, and vehicles. Everybody was kind of having fun. You can see it. Their <laughs> eyes. Like, you know, just grown adults just playing in, in the big, big puddle. <laughs> but, it could be uh, disastrous, but you might as well be. enjoy it. <laughs> well, the water is so brown that you can't see, like, potholes. And, like, yeah. the cars are going side by side. And, like, I don't know where the actual asphalt ends and then turns into yes. the shoulder. And if I were to hit that, things could get a little bit squirrelier. Mm -hmm. uh, and no one was making, like, a plethora of room for each other to pass by because they were judging where they yeah. assumed the road was and trying to stick to that as much as possible. Yes, and it wasn't just the road that was flooded. It was all the sides of the flat landscape that we were in we, that was flooded. So you just yeah. couldn't tell where this road was. I mean, you just look in the distance where the road is again, and that's yeah. what you're riding towards, you know? Yes. Yeah, I'm... Woo! 
<laughs> and having a ball. Like I have uh, my climb adventure Gore-Tex boots and they are waterproof, yeah. but not when- <laughs> then that one, it just goes over the top. Yeah, you can't swim in them and then expect to be like, oh, their feet got wet, this, these boots suck. <laughs> so they held up just as much as they could, but that amount of water and when the, the traffic's going by and splashing you and- I mean, I was getting water in my helmet. Yeah. I had to close my helmet visor because I it did. was getting in my eyes. Fun, no, I got my glasses. <laughs> it was really, really fun. I don't know if you guys, a lot of you are motorcyclists, but when it starts to rain, like there's that like hot engine kind of steamy mm, smell. And when yes. it hits the radiator, there's a very specific, hey, the radiator is soaked smell. You know, and, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of makes you nervous at first because you're like, that's a mechanical smell. Yeah, and, that like, can't be good, but yeah. it is just a part of it. But it was awesome. <laughs> my boots are soaked. <laughs> well, buddy. We actually came to a section where we thought, all right, it's over. Done. There weren't any cars ahead of us. And so we were just driving along like, ah, oh, this is it. That was it. That was great. And then we realized, uh-oh. Round two. <laughs> Round two is coming up. I don't know if it's even ended because there's more stop traffic up here. Like you said, you have to just keep going when you're in the water. You can't just yeah. stop. I mean, when you're going, you're pushing the water out of your way yeah. to a certain extent, right? But when you stop, all that water that you're physically pushing out of your way then comes back, and that's when yes. things can get a little bit more sketchy. But yeah, again, I was we just smiling it. and woohoo, <laughs> and, and Marissa's giggling in my ear, and you know. Oh man, you know. it was it was a water ride. It was, <laughs> splish splash, we were taking a bath. It was <laughs> super, super fun. But my feet were just, you know, I'm changing gears, pressing on the brakes, and it's just like. Oh. Just, that's the, I think everybody's favorite feeling in the world. No. <laughs> Soggy socks and boots. It's just like, it reminds me of- Big heavy boots. Just oh. pleasant shoes. At least that wasn't the sewage line, but I am soaked. That was a lot. That was intense. Well, there was like, the, there was like being on the open water and like jet ski going by. It was like, whoosh, just nailed me. So after that massive water crossing, we were going along the highway and we saw this place to stop, a rest area with a yeah. little cafe, and we're like, uh, we, we have to stop. Yeah, we had just a hate not too long ago, but I was like, uh, yeah. I feel disgusting. Uh, <laughs> the waist down. You needed to take off your boots. Oh, I sure did. <laughs> and I can just feel my toes swimming around like goldfish. Oh, no. Oh my gosh! You dumped your boot out. I dumped my boot out and it was, yeah, it was gross. A little goldfish was like, <laughs> I was like, oh no! It was like vacuum sealed. It goes like this. Oh! So gross. Look at that. Oh, that, that's a dry boot that's right a, there. <laughs> this, this is, oh. you need a hazmat sign. Oh. I don't know how he lives. <laughs> my, I mean, my boots got wet on the inside, but they didn't puddle up. Then again, my feet are much higher than his. He, he was just like straight up in the river. Aww. But that rest stop was needed, and it was great for us to recharge and continue on to Kota Kinabalu. Malaysia has Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital KL. over in West Malaysia. Yeah, KL. There's KB, 
Kotabaru, I think, and there's KK, which is where we were headed, Kota Kinabalu. And Kota means the place of. And Kinabalu is the big mountain of Borneo, which happens to be very close to this big city. And so this is the place of Kinabalu. Even though Kinabalu is not there. Just to be That's clear. right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the place next to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is on the coast. And as we came into Kota Kinabalu, we realized how beautiful this city is. It's very modern, it's got yeah. big buildings That's and shopping mall. neon lights, shopping mall. It's uh, got a whole mixture of cultures there. So you got your kind of like Chinatown mixed in with your Malay area, mixed in with all the indigenous people. So cool. Yeah. We finally found our little uh, hotel we were staying at. And like we were kind of in a busy part of town, right? And it's a rental bike and it's a KTM. The theft is not yeah. rampant anywhere, but I just wanted to be double, triple safe with everything. For sure. We didn't want to just leave it on the street. Yeah. And the guy said that, you know, he had these sliding doors and he said that we could park it in uh, the little hotel on the little section where it wasn't being yeah. used for much. But I. I there was no way to yeah. get it in there oh, without wow. lifting it up in. Yeah, I sat there just kind of being a big dummy. I mean, you could have gotten over that ledge if yeah. you had been able to turn the bike to face it. This is but true. because you were on the sidewalk, there was no way to turn into yeah, it. And it he saw me do it work. like three times and was like, it's going to be just fine. I'm yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> thank safer. you. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> We walked up into our hotel and it was like a... It was like a little Swiss chalet yes. in the Alps. Okay, before I close the window, because uh, we're gonna have the air conditioner on, look at how cute this window is with the view of the city. I loved it. It had the little curtained uh, shutters to the window yeah. that would open up to the street below and it was all wood. It was really, really, really nice. Cute. It was exactly what we needed. It was on like the third floor though. Yes. <laughs> but to get the cute little shutter window view, that would be high up. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So I am not feeling very good today. But little did we know that the, the rain from the previous couple days and getting drenched and being in the hot sun made Marissa get pretty ill. Yes. But that will all be in the next episode. And we have some fun, exciting news. The podcast edition yes. of all of our episodes. So some of you guys out there have said, wouldn't it be great if you had a podcast or audio version of your episodes so that I can listen to them on the road, on the motorcycle, in my car, on a bike, doing dishes, whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. And we listened. We did indeed. So you very well may be listening to this in that podcast version yes. of our episode. <laughs> And so you are fairly aware that it exists, but for the rest of everybody, we are now on iHeartRadio, we're yes. on Apple Podcasts, Google, we're on Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all the things. You can find us everywhere. You just have to look up Two Up and Overloaded, and we're there as a podcast. This is true, and if you are a patron, you get the, the podcast episodes a week early, just like you do the YouTube videos. That's right. As well as our YouTube members. Uh, yes. Yes, they get our videos a week early as well. So we want to thank everybody who supports us out there. We're so glad to have you along on this journey. It's been an amazing experience. And uh, we can't wait to show you all the amazing things we've been up to. So if you liked this video, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. This was the longest water crossing that we had ever experienced. There were a couple really long ones in the Baviansklouf in South Africa. That's true. Yeah. But this was the longest one that we had experienced on a major road. This, this is, is a true. major highway and it was completely flooded yeah. out. This is definitely the longest flooded highway we've ever been on, <laughs> just to be clear, but yeah.